feel so official. Uh, thank you guys all so much, and thank you, thank you to our guests for, for coming here. Um, I think to, the part of today is kind of about the, the starting your digital art collection. So to start, I kind of want to start with you, Danny, what, like, and, and for everyone, what are the biggest misconceptions people have about digital art collection from like a creator perspective, from an artist perspective, from a collector perspective? Like what are the things that you've encountered? Sure, yeah, I think maybe I'm in a very unique position to uh, talk about at least my experience. You know, I, uh, my artist name is Cool Man and I've been creating digital art, uh, you know, uh, on Web2 platforms for uh, years and years and years before I even knew what Web3 or an NFT was. Uh, so, you know, I think a common misconception would be, uh, you know, digital art, you know, especially since it could live just on like an Instagram timeline or a TikTok for you page. It's seen maybe more as just something that's uh, maybe a little bit more passive and oh, it, maybe it's just like a meme or a quick little watch while you're on the toilet or something. And I'm sure a lot of my followers have uh, done exactly that. Uh, but it's entertainment and people connect with, with, with it in a very real way. Um, sometimes people spend even more time and have even more emotion with a piece of digital art than maybe they have with a canvas, right? The barrier to entry is, you know, almost much lower and much more universal uh, uh, for just about anybody to look at a JPEG like a like a bored ape. Uh, you know, a three-year-old could assess that that's pretty dang cool, right? So I think um, a common misconception is like, oh, it's not valuable because it lives on a screen, and I think that's uh, what Web three proved pretty wrong, uh, very powerfully. Uh, so I, th I could see the narrative changing in a lot of my web 2 audience kind of waking up to that um and uh it's pretty cool to see the the evolution to that oh cool hi i think that was a great question um i think one of the things that is kind of a little bit of a misconception is digital art happens very fast um and when we look at the process of digital creative production that goes into digital art with animations, with creating videos, with understanding the theory behind it. There's a lot of work, there's a lot of thought, and there's still a lot of intentionality that comes into digital art. And when we think of art, we should also be thinking of art as the outward expression of human creation. There's a journey, there's a story. I'm a big fan of Coleman's work because it does say something, it's funny, that. Uh, comment on society and it doesn't really matter to me what medium that is in whether it's a painting or whether that's an animated gif or whatever medium it chose to be it's about that human expression and if people feel connected if people feel a part of it because they see it on their phone and it makes them happy on instagram that's a beautiful thing and the value of that human connection through the art whichever the medium i think is the most important thing and the fact that digital art has made that accessible to so many people in such a wider way um, I think is a really beautiful thing. Thanks. Oops. Um, <clears throat> uh, my name is Chris, and in fact, I I am a kind of hybrid. I run a traditional gallery called Shout, which is a contemporary, and we started the NFT gallery two years ago. And uh, and at the same time, I'm financed by training. I've been a banker for my entire career. I, I work with the money, so from the investor collector. Uh, point of view, I, 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 I have, maybe we can share something. I, I, I'm, I totally agree with uh, Coleman, uh, Art Entertainment is, is a digital art. And I'm now still selling candles, oil paint, to my collector's client. I was in the Art Basel yesterday, people were coming back. But I would say art is a form with different um, vehicle um, to present the feeling of the artist itself. Maybe a thousand years ago, people used oil or, 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 or very simple stuff to draw, and then Coleman, now you're using your computer to draw. It's kind of expression, your feeling, your love. Uh, what do you think about the, 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 the world? This is universal and no change. But now the generation is moving. My kids, you know, they spend more time in the, in the cell phone than, than, than the original, than the box. I mean, it's kind of changing the medium again. So I believe, in the long run, I believe in digital art. In fact, as a gallery owner, my, 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 my light mail is no sales. And people in Hong Kong is collecting art, but you know, Hong Kong is so limited space. If you buy three, four, five art in your house, how can you buy more? 
And that's why I believe in the digital art in the future. And I, I work with Samsung. You know, Samsung is very advocate in the digital art for the television. I think we are the first uh, 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 partner with Samsung uh, to promote the, the, the art store and in, in, in the TV, we sell the frame TV to our collector. So that hopefully one day, um, our collector can buy the art through the electronic channel and they can sell their art through the electronic channel instead of going to Art Basel every year, which is so expensive for most of the ordinary people. So that's my, my, my real thanks. Those are some uh, pretty interesting insights from a very diverse background, um, which feeds into our next question, uh, maybe for you, Chris. What are the trends you see? Uh, what's changing for modern collectors? I think two, three years ago when crypto is still a trend, Bitcoin was still at the peak, uh, all of a sudden people are engaged in the uh, metaverse, uh, NFT, but after the crash, uh, since two years ago, people are quiet. And of course, this few months is coming back. The crypto is reaching the new height, and then uh, people start talking about the NFT again. So we did uh, first probably uh, a NFT gallery in, in Cosway Bay Heisen two years ago with Samsung support, which is tremendous success. But all of a sudden, everything stopped, okay? And I think it's a process. I just talk before the, our, our, our start. You know, 20 years ago, there's an a internet company goes up and down. Um, now the company is called Amazon. You know, there is always a process, a progress. You know, people get, need to get to know more about the NFT, the metaverse, how you appreciate, how you look, uh, uh, enjoy your art piece in your living room through your TV instead of buying a canvas hanging on your wall. But I believe this is a trend, uh, technology advanced, and then people have a limited space, and people love art, this is in our genetic, it's deep in our gene. So I believe in the future, I believe the electronic art NFT will be the future trend of the art collection. And we, as a gallery, we, of course, we, we need to pay our rent, pay, pay our salary, we need to still to doing our ordinary uh, 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 physical stuff. But at the same time, uh, we still have the mandate uh, to promote the digital art uh, through our web, uh, I mean, the, the blockchain, the, 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 the different, uh, with the digital artists to work together. Great question. Um, I wanted to look more at like kind of the use cases of digital art outside of buying an NFT, which is an art NFT. Um, so we had an event yesterday um, that my company and the Trilogy hosted called Alt Basel, um, which was a little HTML joke about an alternative offering to Art Basel, because that's how we roll. And um, NFTs were used in that event as part of the ticketing um, to basically help us to give a little bit of Web3 access for the event, um, but it wasn't about the digital art that was sold as NFTs. We used certain artworks as representative, but that NFT came with a value, which was entrance into the event. Uh, we did have digital art at the event. We had a large digital screen that was showcasing the works of local artists. I think we had eight local artists being shown on the screen and they were going on in the background. But at the same time as that, we also included postcards that were freely distributed to all of the attendees with the artist's information, with a QR code so you could scan and you could have um, inter direct interaction with the artist. Um, we didn't take any commission on the sales, this was done for the community side. And I think that that's a really great representation of how technology can be used to solve problems. It's very difficult when you're at an event that has 300 people, you're an artist, someone sees your art on the screen, yes, you scan a QR code and it takes you to a tab, but if you guys are anything like me, I have a hundred tabs open at once on my Google Chrome or my Safari and I lose it. If I have a postcard in my bag with a QR code, I pick it up at a later date and I scan that. Now, we could have thought a bit in advance that could have scanned into an airdrop of an NFT, which said, you know, had the artist's information on, that might be something we do next time. But we have to be looking at how can we use these practically? How can we use technology to help in a way? I own a couple of NFTs, but you know, and I shouldn't be saying this with my background is, 
how do I use it? Like, how do I physically use my digital art? I make digital art, I print it onto aluminium, um, which is fireproof, as I terrified many people in my family by trying to set fire to my printed out digital art. It's on aluminium, it's destructible. Um, yeah, I'll print some of your stuff on it, it's a cool technique. Um, but there's loads of ways of looking at the creative production and the digital side and going, how can I bring this into reality? And then how can I bring reality into the digital space? And um, I should have introduced myself like these guys did. Um, I run a company called Starkin, and we focus on creating, um, basically digitalizing human connection and human expression through different, different mediums um, onto technology and bringing things from the digital world into the real world. Um, because I personally believe that you cannot have the digital world without the real world or the real world without the digital world. And that's basically all I'm about. Um, and seeing everyone at Alt Basel come together as a community and reminding each other that we're not divided by our different viewpoints and things and bringing everyone into a room as artists and creators and having technology play such a big part of bringing people together in the real world, it was a really beautiful thing to see. And I'll leave it there. Remind me of the question about investors. Uh, no, the question My memory is terrible. No, no, that, um, what, are the, what, what are the trends you see? Uh, what's changing for modern collection? Yeah, you know, so I, again, my, my very personal journey, I started, uh, my first animation was in 2017, and it instantly went viral, and, you know, my pages have amassed, you know, 10, 12 million followers across all my socials. Uh, so I was doing strictly animation, right? Uh, for a few years, and that was because I was doodling, as, you know, in my childhood, and I finally found an avenue where I could get my doodles out there through, uh, th through social media, and it was really making waves and resonating with a lot of people. So, so when I discovered NFTs in um, very early 2021, January 2021, um, I just noticed this, this was a very cool vehicle to connect deeper with uh, either people that were already fans of my work for so many years, uh, in, in a way that's almost deeper than uh, uh, you mentioned to me that your friend has a, has a hoodie of mine that I made uh, back in 2019 and it's still in pristine condition, which is awesome to hear, which is obviously a uh, traditional means for maybe a creator or, or an artist to, to connect with their fans, like a, a, a cause doing like a vinyl toy drop, right? You get to own that physical uh, you know, um, thing and call it yours. But I noticed with NFTs, since my world is inherently so digital, uh, whether you're a fan of mine for a few years or you're a new fan or you know zero about me, you're able to enter my universe in a, uh, a, a, in, in a deeper way, in a more personal way where you could own, you know, I did a, my, my NFT project is called Cool Man's Universe and it was a PFP project, 10,000 different uh, species, which my character's name is Spech, you could have your very own Spech, unique to you, you know, and, and you, could, you could own that. You could, you could make, you, you could, because, you know, you liked the color or you liked what that Spech was wearing or you liked the pair of sunglasses it had. And it was, it just seemed to me like to be a very, you know, just a deep, uh, personal, uh, uh, you know, deeper relationship that I could form with all these people that appreciated my work. And I think that's a really you know, awesome avenue that continues to be explored, uh, you know, in new ways and, and in larger ways too, like Starbucks, you know, just maybe under a year ago using, you know, digital collectibles to deepen the, the relationship with their customers, right, and give them unique experiences and, um, and reward them, right? So I think that continues to be um, innovated, you know, by the people that you see on the stage here and I'm just the, the weirdo, you know, drawing the art for it, but um, it's really cool to see that that deeper connection with the collector um, being heightened, you know, with with Web3 technology. Um, I think that's a really great answer. And I kind of want to dig a bit more into something you mentioned about, like, your audience and everything else. So I think maybe a common misconception people have, or, or maybe it's true, is that a lot of people that like digital art are younger people, right? Uh, I can speak personally, like, my fiance's mom, like, is a huge fan of yours, like she loves all your work. Yeah. Um, so just wondering like, what, what are actually the demographics of people that are actually collecting or interested in digital art? Where do you feel like, you know, in the region, like is it, is it APAC, is it North America? Like where is kind of the growth and where is the, like the more interesting stuff you think happening? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. I, I think, you know, I think while the sample size of, of if I think of it as a Venn diagram, right, I think of like inherent Web2 followers, and then I think of the other circle as, as Web3, you know, folks that 
uh, understand how to collect a, an N NFT of mine. I would say the, uh, you know, those crossroads are still uh, a, a relatively small sample pool, maybe, uh, you know, uh, but, but I, I like to think that those few people that are doing that are the super fans. I don't know what's happening here, but I'm gonna power through it. Um, so I think to pinpoint a place on the map, it's hard to do, right? I think it probably is more Western culture, um, and I have a lot. I mean, my my work is so you know internationally uh, appreciated, which is of course an honor, you know, to see like a DM from like, you know, uh, uh, Bangalore, India, right, or like somewhere in Vietnam or or wherever, right? So I think, uh, do I think Web three? culture is flourishing there yet, I don't, but I think it's gonna get there, and I think that's the exciting part, and I think that's why everybody in the room here is, is you know, um, motivated to continue pushing the culture forward. But I would say, you know, uh, if I were to pinpoint the demographic, it's probably, probably more so, uh, you know, just westernized society that, that you know, is, is super hyped on where this can go, so everybody that doesn't yet know how to get access can someday soon get access and be able to participate in the big old Web3 party, you know? Uh, just a quick comment on that. Sorry, I always write things down because I do also forget everything that's going on. Um, when we say collecting, it's really interesting because we're coming at that through the context of ownership, of owning something and owning an NFT. I like to just step back and think about collecting as in saving, screenshotting, seeing on Instagram, viewing, interacting. I'm sure there are many, many people who have collected your work through screenshotting, putting it as their phone background. They don't formally own it, but in some way they are using in a way that will affect their daily life and it's interacting with their consciousness on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and I would say based on looking at the people in my family, especially the younger kids, they always like screenshot and save all these images and they've got Pinterest boards and they've got Instagram save posts and I get in my, I wake up in the morning, I turn on Instagram and I have a hundred memes from different friends around the world. And even though that's not a formal ownership, that's not a, I own this piece of content, I own this, here's my non-fungible token on whichever blockchain I'm on, it is, a, this is something that represents me and I must share it with the world. Um, and I think that that goes through a very, very, very young age group. I think as soon as someone has a device, you can see like my niece is six years old, she screenshots things and shows me them. And if she's screenshotting something, and we, the kids today have just so intuitive use of technology, um, it also helps to build to the brand if it's recognizable, if someone sees and goes, oh, that's cool, man, you know, that's completely recognizable. Um, and affecting the public consciousness in a way, even though it's not linked to financial gain, is brand growth, is brand recognition, and helps you build kind of brand consciousness, and I'll pass. <clears throat> Thanks. You know, um, you know, art, art piece always has two uh, functions. One is you appreciate, you like it, another is the investment vehicle. As a, you know, a fund manager, asset manager for so many years, I love art at the same time. Uh, my client buy art because they love it and because they believe it's go, going up the price. And then um, for digital, as I said, it, it, it cut off all the intermediate. You know, we can sell by through the uh, micro, uh, my cell phone easily you know, with the blockchain. Um, it's a lot uh, safe to make sure the source, um, the authenticity, everything. So I think the Web3 basically is promoting art, prom uh, helping artists. In the past, you need to go for the middleman, you need to go for the gallery, you know, it's quite, quite an expensive uh, journey. But now a lot of our artists, they, they promote themselves using the IG, social media, and I hope easy. I think maybe a few years later, people can buy, sell their, their, their stream cap, their, their art piece through the social media, through the web free channel. I think this, this must be, a, this is a trend and, and it, it will be, you know, become our daily lives very soon. Got it. I mean, those are some very, very interesting points. So we covered trends, we covered misconceptions, industry growth. Let, let's talk about what excites you. Is there, is there something that, that you'd like to share? You know, as I said, I, I'm a, an investor. I, I pay with my money. And then, you know, every new change, they create a money-making opportunities. Okay, so I, I, I am a more, you know, I believe 
um, they are changing the landscape for all the financial activities, investments, and then art is kind of a different asset class. And like the you know physical gold, people can use blockchain you know to trade the physical gold. And I mean art, maybe later on the 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 equity, the the bond instrument, you know the cash flow can be trade. Um, but you know today's our topic is more about art as a financier, as an art gallery owner. I I I I'm all in <laughs> in this this area. Yeah. Where to start? Um, <laughs> there's a couple of things. So I'd like to just shout out about digital creative production and the process and the teams involved in creating digital creative production assets and everything you see on these digital screens and even the fabulous videographer at the back is part of the digital creative production industry. Um, DCP and the usability and the access coming from digital art um, cross mediums of if you wanted to do something as a digital experience, if you want to do something in physical reality, there's so many different use cases for digital art out of the traditional, it's art and it's a gallery. Uh, what I'm wearing today is um, made out of recycled uh, water bottles. So it's a fabric that me and my business partner have been promoting. This is one of her designs. Um, and we're looking at taking digital artists' work and printing them over this to create something that's as sustainable as physically possible with digital artists. And we don't have that issue of going from physical art where it's on a canvas and we need to scan in, basically looking at using vector artwork, using files and taking it straight into pre-reduced materials, which can then be printed onto this material, which is basically... Oh, synergy. Do you want to make it sustainable there? Um, and, and yeah, there's so many different cross-use cases for digital art because the files are already formatted. We're, we're saving money by, instead of scanning something in and going through, there's so many different use cases in the real world and the digital world. Um, the other thing is looking at how we can archive and store artwork um, for future legacy with the blockchain, but that's another conversation, and I will pass to Cool Man. Yeah, I, I'm very, very excited about uh, what I've been excited about since, uh, you know, day one, right? I, I think continuing to double down on creating experiences uh, and, and deepening the connection between my characters and uh, the, the people, between humans, right? The the, uh, the the three-year-old girl and the 45-year-old businessman and the 80-year-old grandma and everybody in between. I think uh, my, um, sh my passion has always been storytelling, right? So that's why I made my first animation. That's why I made my first uh, NFT. And it's why I first came to Hong Kong a year ago. You know, it's, it's just trying to discover more ways to get inspired so I could continue to make better and better work and tell better and better stories. Um, so, you know, I think we look at a Mickey Mouse, right? We look at Disney and we wonder, hey, why has this thing succeeded for uh, a century? You know, this piece of IP that uh, it's a fictional character, right? But it doesn't matter that it's not real. It's affected the lives for the better for millions and millions and millions of people for a generation. Uh, you know, that's something that has transcended the uh, lifespan of the human being Walt Disney, right? That guy is dead, but his creations live on. Same thing with uh, uh, Jim Henson, to use another example, right? With, with the Muppets and Sesame Street. So um, the reason I, I get excited about, I think, what, what is possible with my characters um, and uh, what I can do with Web3 digital art, you know, Web2, Web1, Web0, you know, everything, right, is, is the ability to hopefully tell better and better stories to make people's lives better and, and to uh, live beyond me someday. And, and I think that's where um, the, the, the magic from art happens. I think that's why art has been relevant since the Stone Age, is, is the emotion the emotional tie to it all. So um, that I continue to get more and more excited about what new experiences, what new stories I could tell in the tools that are you know, available to me. And when NFTs and, and Web3 came on my radar, that was a new tool uh, on my radar that I said, you know, let me figure out how to tell a story here. So, um, and that's exactly what I did with, uh, with, with Cool Man's Universe. So, uh, and, and continue to do in different ways. Well, I love the, the idea of Web3 being a tool, and I actually, <clears throat> I, wanna, I kinda wanna drill down a little bit more, right? 
Right now we're in the Web3 Living Lab in Cyberborn. So Web3 obviously is a huge topic here, uh, literally. So what is, like for you as a creator or as a collector, like what, why are things like Web3, NFT technology, like how does it help you tell better stories? What, why would you recommend, you know, or would you recommend the next generation of artists to do the same thing? I think the main difference between Web3 and Web2 is the um, exciting idea of, of ownership, right? You get to, uh, you know, just like when you, uh, you know, play a video game, you choose your own avatar or, you know, you get, there's this extra de degree of personalization. You identify with your NFT, you identify with your avatar, right? So I think what, what I think should be exciting for other artists like myself and what I try to you know, advocate for other artists like myself, because there's still a stigma, right, against, you know, Web3 and NFTs, and maybe even just, you know, a, a, a doubt or a caution. A lot of people hear a lot of, a lot of things, and even I've had my own personal roller coaster of a journey, even in just the short past two years. Um, but I think, I say, you think of it, like I said before, think of it like a tool to double down on your storytelling, double down on your creativity, and, and uh, uh, if you're able to express yourself in new and different ways, um, then explore that, right? You know, run with that. And I think if I were, you know, sitting in a room full of, of you know, hesitant artists who are just so inherently creative and passionate about their work, um, and they were to ask me, cool man, should I get into NFTs? Should I get into Web3? That's exactly uh, what I would tell them. That's, how, that's what I think is exciting for, for potential new artists um, join, thinking about joining the space. So I would love to echo that, um, the decentralization side of it, um, looking at how the, basically looking at blockchain as a digital archive and looking as a ledger and the information that you want to be on there is on there. If you just take a screenshot of something and it can be reposted, that metadata is not necessarily kept. Um, but if you look and usually like a lot of these NFTs are working with IPFS, um, you can trace that back and you can see the dates of different things. It's, it's just for your archive, basically, to understand uh, where things are coming. There are obviously IP issues and copyright issues and everything, but that's a longer story. Um, the other thing I've written down here is uh, fractionalized ownership of as assets. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, different companies out there that will, you can have partial ownership of an NFT of a larger artist and be own part of a Picasso or part of it, whatever. Um, that's a great way to feel connected and to be a part of something. Um, but also looking at your smart contracts, looking at the remuneration for creative teams, especially digital creative production teams. It's not one person usually making a complex animation, it's lots of people. If they can be remunerated and that's automatic on the smart contract, that means the five people involved in that production are automatically being paid and getting the royalties from the artwork, which is something that is a little bit harder to do with traditional uh, art selling art selling ways, I don't know what the proper language is for that. I think that's it, art, art selling, selling ways. ways. <laughs> um, but it's just, it's really exciting, especially for video producers, animators, and people who are using digital creative production. So definitely the way forward. Yeah, as a gallery owner, I mean, WebBees always keep me awake at night, you know. Um, I think this is a decentralization, why artists still need a gallery to represent them to sell to the end, um, uh, 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 you know, art lover. So it keep me awake all the time. But I would say this is a change that we cannot escape. Then we need to embrace it. As a new um, gallery, I believe we need to adopt and accept where we will be the change, will be the future, and then how we can key way, how we can help our artists to grow, to understand the market, to reach to the public. I mean, at the end of the day, they will do it themselves. The, the, the collector will approach the artist directly through the internet, through the web free, you know, we don't have the edge. But I mean, as a gallery, we need to always think about to, to cultivate the new artists, to promote the art, to QA the story to the public. And this is something we need to do rather than, you know, escaping, you know, and uh, thinking about the old good days. There's no more old good days for the gallery in, the, in, in, in front of the web free new development. I'd just like to add on that I've been to shout a lot, and I think what you do for the digital literacy, 
for the artists is really, really amazing to show people like this is what we have on the digital screens and stuff. And I know from artists that I work with, they've see, gone to shout and gone, oh, it makes me want to do digital art because I saw it here. So I think the education there has been really amazing on your side. Yeah, it's a long story. I mean, we need to talk about it offline because this is a, a lot of thing I cannot think about. Not not yet a, a total solution, but at least we have the direction. No, I said the introduction of just being such a visible gallery with digital work on screens. I know from we've got artists who are in their early twenties. Yeah. Their first interaction with digital art in Hong Kong was going to Shout Gallery, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then they're oh, I know my art's art because I've seen this, and it just sure. the education side of yeah, that I think sure, is sure. so important and valuable of what you've done. And, and it's, there's an intersection between the offline and online. They need to see like this, the beautiful screen with the beautiful art, and then they will search their that at home. I mean, this is kind of a value so far for the physical gallery to promote the digital art piece. Thanks. I, I think that's totally true. I think everything comes in cycles. So as long as you're able to evolve, uh, I think everything will be fine. Um, so a lot about technical talk, fractionization, digital identity. Let's talk about artists. Um, are there any special artists that really captivate you that you'd like to highlight? We have a very good uh, digital artist yeah, here, of course. Uh, maybe, maybe this is Oma Coleman. It's really, really fantastic. And then in Hong Kong, I, I, I we, we, we have a very young artist called uh, 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 Off God. Yeah, he, his, we, we are so happy to have his first exhibition in Hong Kong, solo exhibition, it, it was trying a uh, very quick sales. Of course, that's, that's the value. I mean, as a gallery, we need to identify the new young potential artists and how we help them to grow. I think this is something, I, I, for the other technical area, I'm not the specialist to tell, but at least as a gallery owner, this is my, my mandate, this is what we can do and what we can help. Oh, I'm gonna, <laughs> too many mics. I'm just going to talk about the artists that we featured at yesterday's event. Uh, so they're all Hong Kong based artists and we had work from The Ink Trail, um, Andreas von Rudenbrock, um, who's a great uh, line illustrator, Alvin C.K. Lam, who does uh, watercolor paintings of different Hong Kong artisans, Sean P. Griffin, who's a photographer who plays a lot with uh, gender and sexuality, who was also director of arts and culture for the Gay Games. Uh, Diki Suzuki, who's a photographer, he uses post-production techniques and takes beautiful pictures of Hong Kong. Um, why am I missing out? Robin RVZR, uh, she's a young female animator, illustrator, has this really beautiful style, which is a fusion of like kind of South African, Indian, and Hong Kong vibes, and she does this beautiful storytelling of her relationships through her animations and spatial artwork. Uh, Jum, J-U-M. Another artist, she's I think Brazilian originally, she does a lot of like psychedelic digital art, awesome stuff. Um, what's his name? Styx Grix, um, digital illustrator, does a lot of like Japanese style artworks that are very playing with cyberpunk and sexuality. Um, myself, uh, VMSCH underscore art on Instagram. And Nick Teeple, who is a uh, beautiful uh, video artist and he's great, some beautiful 3D stuff and they were on the screen yesterday. Yeah, I'll, you know, I'll just talk about my friends uh, as well. I think uh, uh, I have so many talented folks from around the world that I've met over the years. Uh, uh, my friend uh, Vinny Hager has, uh, who, who has his project uh, Letters, um, which has uh, made waves, you know, in Web3 over the past few years. I have another New York-based friend, uh, F. Dot. Shout out to him. He's a he's a New York homie who. Uh, has just been really, um, you know, making waves as well in both, uh, you know, the the traditional art scene and in Web three as it just continues to merge more and more. Um, but I think back to more so my early uh, years before I really, you know, picked up a a, a paintbrush myself and started making my own canvases, um, which I only really started doing over over uh, quarantine in L A. But uh, I think about uh, uh, Timothy Goodman, who is also based in New York, um, and uh, he did a whole extensive collaboration with, with Uniqlo and uh, did an exclusive sneaker with uh, Kevin Durant, which is super sick. Uh, but I, I, I would love to give a very special shout out to my friend Chantel Martin. Uh, Chantel uh, is just a she's, a, she's a, she's a brilliant artist. Uh, 
uh, does you know line work in just these very graceful ways. She's uh, she took over the New York City Ballet at Lincoln Center. Um, just massive, massive, just very elegant, uh, 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 w talented woman. But uh, uh, she was the first artist that not only uh, uh, you know uh, in, you know just invited me over to her studio in 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 New Jersey actually uh, just so I could see you know what a art studio looked like. But she was also the first person to. Um, just destigmatize the whole art thing, not only with her style that I really resonated with because it just looked and felt like my doodles that I would make in my sketchbook, but she said, uh, you should try painting, you know? And I was like, all I, that's all I needed. I needed an artist as, as prominent and as established uh, and as kind as her to, to, to say that and to allow me to. And then I think like uh, a week went by and I just started uh, you know, experimenting more with my doodles and eventually started you know, painting on canvas and, and I think that's really all it takes is someone to be kind and to destigmatize whether it's the art world, the fine art world, the gallery space, you know, NFTs, Web3, uh, photography, whatever it is, you know, uh, it was especially when you're, you know, a, a, a young artist, maybe you feel like, oh, I could never do that. Uh, you just need someone to say you can. And that was uh, Chantel Martin for me in, in art. So shout out to Chantel. Yeah, it's beautiful. I really love all the recommendations. I'm definitely going to check them out. You know, I'm mindful of time, so maybe we just have two more questions left, and then we'll open it up for Q&A if anyone wants to ask anything. Um, from my end, you know, obviously, uh, right now it's Hong Kong Art Week. We have Art Basel. We have Art Central. You know, Vita did a really um, amazing event as well last night. So I'm just wondering, like, what role do places like Hong Kong play in the development of art, digital art, you know, NFT, Web3 art, and, and what recommendations would you give? What, what have you seen that you like? And then what, you know, suggestions would you give that could be improved? Yeah, I am, I'm just such a big advocate of, of Hong Kong. Uh, I feel like over the past, so my first, this is my second time in Hong Kong. The first time I came here was uh, exactly a year ago. And I just feel like I just airdropped here and just didn't know what I was doing and just like did a bunch of grassroots activations. You might have seen my uh, two-story mural uh, in LKF on the California Tower or uh, the, 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 the cool man tram that was going around town for a few months last year. So that all happened very, very quick. And, but what I was very just so um, thrilled about and, and, and uh, you know, enamored about was just the, the love that I felt here. There was uh, two weeks after, you know, the mask mandate here led up last Art Basel uh, when I appeared. And I just uh, felt the bustling energy of, of, of Hong Kong and, and at where I was at in my personal life and my personal journey at the time is, uh, you know, I just felt like I needed just a nice hug and that's exactly what Hong Kong gave me. It was the first time that uh, I traveled internationally since before COVID. Uh, my first time I traveled to Asia, uh, period. You know, a few months later, I, I had a, my, my solo exhibition at uh, Shanghai K11, but you know, Hong Kong was, was first. And, and I think like just with all those elements in mind, it just instilled in me such a powerful, um, deep appreciation for uh, Hong Kong and, and all the people here. I, at the time, never seen anything like it. I never felt anything so, so deeply. It was just a, excitement and, and, and a love and a deep appreciation for arts and creativity which I never really seen anywhere else you know and I come I, I come from New York and I live in LA and uh, Hong Kong just you know cares just that little extra bit deeper um, and has you know amazing brilliant conversations being started around mental wellness which is my whole jam you know all my characters are uh, mental health advocates and 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 so I think you know just personally speaking as as an artist it just instilled in me so much inspiration so much motivation to keep exploring my own art and my own creativity and I will uh, always be uh, just very appreciative of that for Hong Kong yeah I love Hong Kong um, I'm half Chinese um, but originally more kind of mainland China is my go to Hong Kong's been my home for the last nine years and just coming from someone with Eurasian background who's lived in the UK who's lived in the US who's lived a long time in Hong Kong and China I think there's something about the Chinese culture of really being dedicated to a craft 
and a lot of attention, a lot of detail, and a lot of focus on little details, which maybe uh, is overseen um, in other areas of the world or not seen as being as important. Um, the ingenuity, especially within China, of seeing how things can work and how things can collaborate and the ethos of sharing. And, you know, you come into the family, we share the food, we share the art, we share the creativity. My company is basically me and my brother and my cousin and my uncle and everyone supporting each other. And a lot of Chinese businesses and Hong Kong businesses are family run and family supported and supported by the community. And I feel that very much in the Hong Kong digital scene and the art scene, it feels like a family almost. Everyone knows each other, everyone's trying to help each other out. And when I was in New York, I was shocked because that was not what I, everyone was against each other and I was not used to it. And I was like, as soon as I was like, okay, I can't, I'm done with it. I don't, I love New York, but I'm not doing this. I'm going back to China. Like, um, and uh, it was very strange because in Hong Kong, I'm perceived as being more Western. And I went to New York and they're like, where are you from? And I'm like, I'm going back there. Like, bye guys. <laughs> um, but no, just the, the community and the support from everyone is just such a, a beautiful thing. And I'm so excited to see what the next 10 years in Hong Kong looks like. I mean, <clears throat> Hong Kong has already been the, one of the biggest trading um, center for art. So Art Basel is very successful. So I think basically Hong Kong has all the elements we need to build up the art market. But for the digital art, it's far from enough. I went to uh, Art Basel yesterday. There's not enough um, support or there is not enough uh, um, display for all the digital art. I, 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 such, I, I believe uh, maybe Cyberport can have a more active role and promoting the digital art because in the physical art we already have all the good ingredients that not much space can compete with us. Maybe just some um, small push from the government uh, to promote the digital art, it helps a lot. Those are some very, very powerful takes. Um, conscious of time here, um, what piece of advice would you give someone starting their art collection journey or art journey? I would say is to start something you like. It's very important, no matter it goes up or goes down. No one knows, but as long as you love the art piece, you feel good when you see it in your living room, in your bedroom every day, or in your, your screen cat, your cell phone, this is the art you can start to collect. I've just written down here, intention, expression, and medium, just do it. What do you, what's your intention with this art? How do you want ma to make people feel? How do you want to express that? What mediums are you gonna do it in if you're looking at digital art? Do you wanna make an animation? Do you wanna use Photoshop? Do you wanna, what tools are you gonna use? Educate yourself, see what's out there. Never stop learning. I try and learn, I learned ZBrush the other day because I was like, I wonder what it'd be like to do 3D modeling. I'm sure I could work out. I wasn't very good at it, um, but you know, it was still fun to do and to understand more in depth about the process that people go into. And there's tutorials online, you can teach yourself, have fun with it. But what are you trying to express? What are you trying to communicate with the outside world? And how can you do that with a digital medium? I, I, I echo what both of you guys said, collect what you enjoy, just doing it. Uh, you know, to speak about, you know, just getting into art, period, I think, uh, uh, you know, you just really, th there's so much pressure, right, in, in, in the current age of, of content and social media, and you're like, oh, well, here's my style, I want to doodle, you know, uh, in, in this certain type of, of way, and then you see on social media that there's a thousand other people doing it exactly that way, and you're like, well, how am I going to break through, you know, how am I going to break through in photography and painting and in NFTs and sculpting and music and and there's just infinite reasons to not do it. So I think, you know, when there's infinite reasons to not do it, then you might as well just give it a shot, right? Because, like, why not just see what happens? My first animation that I posted uh, was, was I didn't have any drawing tablet. I couldn't afford an iPad or a Wacom tablet. All I had was uh, a, a pen and a, uh, uh, I had a Sharpie and a, and a post, and a, like an index card, a white index card, and I had my phone and I had my college computer, and I somehow figured a way to make that character that I drew on that index card to move on my computer. I had no animation software. I only had Final Cut Pro, which I used to uh, 
edit uh, music videos that I would shoot for like $200 USD if, if I managed to get paid by the rapper I found on Craigslist. So um, like you just got to go for it and you figure it out along the way. And if, uh, if there's, uh, you know, if there's infinite reasons to, uh, you know, doubt yourself and ask yourself, well, why even bother? That's to me at least a you. Uh, that's usually a good indication that you should explore it, you know. Because why? Why the hell not, man? And and uh, uh, so I would say, you know, you're always gonna think that your idea is dumb until it's done. And uh, I thought my first uh, art animation journey was a dumb one. Um, and if I didn't do it, I wouldn't be uh, hanging out with all these cool people in Hong Kong right now. So uh, yeah, just just go for it. Just go for it. Uh, thank you guys so much. That was such amazing advice. Can we, can we give them, them a round of applause? It's really great. Is there anyone in the audience that wants to ask a question? Or Thank you guys. Um, appreciate the sharing. Lots to learn as well. Um, uh, hopefully not too controversial question, but I want to get your thoughts about generative AI and the role it plays in digital creators as well. Like, Do you see as creation of value as well, an enabler, or do you see it as like, you know, destroys value of like what it means to be an artist? Just want to hear your thoughts. Yeah, uh, just another tool, man. I, I think, uh, like I said before, every, every generation has a new set of tools that are uh, at first scary and uh, maybe even a little misunderstood, right? So when the internet first came out, people were terrified. Uh, when the, uh, you know, printing press first came out, people were terrified, right? Uh, so I think, and even the stigma around Web3 and NFTs, right? You compare it to two, three years ago, it's much less scary, much more eco-friendly. Uh, uh, you know, the stigma around it is, is much less, and it just takes time for people to get used to it. So I think it's just a new tool for people to explore. I've seen people and artists and creatives, storytellers do amazing things with generative AI. Will it be used for uh, a lot of evil at first, because it is a new technology? Of course that will kind of be weaned out over time. I think uh, 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 anytime there's new technology on the block, that it attracts a lot of you know, innovators, uh, just as much as a lot of scammers and bad doers. So we're in that period right now, and also just a lot of naysayers, right? People that are freaked out about it. So I think we're in that period right now. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see where it goes in the next few years for, for, for storytellers, yeah. What's your definition of art? I would say uniqueness. Um, okay, so, yeah. so when we when we look at, I have a 45 minute long uh, thing on literally this topic, which is called vision versus visual. It'll be uploaded to my LinkedIn in the next few weeks. Um, but basically, the definition of art is the outward expression of human creativity. Human creativity, not AI creativity. And the way we define art is about the intentionality. So if you type into Mid Journey, image of pig. Is that art? No. Exactly. It's just a cool visual. It's just a it's vision versus visual. If you are putting a prompt in, in the thing I, I go through and I create a, a prompt about a capitalist pig that's influenced by Bertolt Brecht and Weimar Republic Germany and Cabaret and all these things and it's a, a pig that looks like it's very sad and it's a drawing and it's like Egon Schiele and all this stuff. I can argue the story and the narrative behind that. Is it art because of the output, or is it art because of the intentionality? Because of the internet intentionality. Intentionality, right, yeah? So if there's a narrative, if I can argue this is what I'm saying with this art, and this is what I'm expressing, and this is my human opinion, this is my human expression, this is my journey, yeah, it's art. And if you can do that with AI, if it makes things quicker, go for it. I, I'm not one of these, I like doing things as if I want, if I see something in my head and that's what I'm trying to communicate visually, if I can get there quicker and if AI helps me, amazing. The bigger question is around the ethics of where are these images sourced from? And that's something that we're not gonna go into right now because I do like to rant and I'm cautious of time and I'm sure Chris has many interesting things to say on this. I have nothing to add, totally agree. <laughs> one more question. My question is to you. Um, I mean, I really found your answers brilliant, and you are as beautiful in and out as a beautiful art piece with your lovely intellect as well. So my question about is that as an um, investor of digital art, 
you know, um, and I think you already said that we have to give it a go, right? So uh, what exactly is the entry point and how can we make sure that we gain profit? Because as an investor, we are always looking for profits, right? Although we might have to give it a go, but yes, thank you. So having a little think about that, if you were to commission a digital art piece, whether you're buying it as an NFT or whether you're making a digital commission and you were to buy the IP rights to that with the artist, so say you come to me and say, Vida, I'd like to commission an art piece from you, a digital art piece. I'm going to own the full usability of this, and I want to be able to use it in everything going forward. This is my budget. Can you do it? And I say yes or no. And then you take that, and you use it, and you sell it to people to print on materials. You sell it to turn into merchandise. You sell it. That's the way to do it. But we're thinking about it as instead of looking at it as a, this is an art, and it stays on my wall, and yes, let's put into this. You're going to build a brand, you're going to build an image, you're going to build a product line. Maybe you're going to have it as an NFT token that has some other kind of use case. It's just the similar explanation of why do you pay a digital agency to go and do your branding for you, and then you use that brand to you right. know, represent yourself. How do you create a brand out of that digital art piece? That would be my answer. Mm. Yeah, Thank I, you. Th I think the conversation on, on profit is an interesting one and I know zero about it because I just draw little characters with cute little butts and they dance around and they say everything's gonna be okay so if the profit can be an emotional one uh, I did my job and then if you happen to you know flip it ten years from now for a million dollars then great okay. cool you know yeah. okay thank you well I mean it's demand and supplies, you know, price always comes to, you know, but as long as the purity of owning an art is something you really love to really enjoy, I think it's more than the money. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Just the last addition to that is think about what the purchase of that art to a young digital artist means. That's encouragement for them, that's support of them, that's if you're in a position to financially contribute to the artist and for them to be able to go out and create more art, you're sharing your wealth and allowing them to go and continue to create. And that is the thing of the most value. Mm, yeah, I agree totally. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, also, I just want to thank Cyberport for holding the venue. There's food and drinks in the back. Um, yeah, thank you guys. Please feel free to mingle. Maybe, Elisa, do you want to come take a picture with us? Yeah.